Hello, good morning, good afternoon. How are you? How's your day going so far? Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, I'm Rachel. Love you too. Good morning. Hi, India. How are you? Love you too. Love you too. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. South Africa, I was just about to request for you all to do that. Let me know where you're uh, tuning in from. What part of the world are you watching me from? Thank you so much. God bless you too. Good morning. Good morning. Flint, Michigan, Jamaica. Hello, Instagram. And hello to Facebook. Milwaukee, love you too. Well, tell your grandson I said hello. Baltimore, Detroit, Michigan. Cleveland, Ohio, Charlotte, North Carolina. God bless you too. Bahamas, Miami, Orlando, Florida. Merritt Island, Florida. Thomaston, Georgia, I believe that was. Atlanta, Georgia. South Carolina, Mississippi, Cleveland, Ohio. Buffalo, New York, Mississippi. Los Angeles, California. Memphis, Tennessee. Georgia, Houston. Atlanta. Hi, Broderick, how are you? Hi, Ruth. How are you? Birmingham, Alabama, Lithia Springs, Georgia, St. Louis, Missouri, Connecticut, Cincinnati, Ohio, Philly. Hello, everyone. Let me know if you, you can hear me well, see me well. Um, per usual, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but the Lord woke me up with a word this morning and um, I just have to share it. I have to share it because I know for him to wake me up out of my sleep with something like this. I know that this is what God is in the process of doing. And, and I believe that when I release it, um, as you extend your faith, that you will begin to see it manifest. Alabama, hello. Thank you so much. My eight-year-old daughter loves you. Thank you. Tell her I said hello there. Johnson City, Tennessee, Chicago, Albany, Georgia, Stone Mountain, Georgia. I'm beautiful, as I stated before. Awesome. You can see me. You can hear me well. Um, I'm going to give a, a few more of us a little bit more time to come on. Just a few more seconds. And we're going to go into this. I believe it blessed my life this morning. And I believe that it will bless yours. A familiar passage in the Bible. Many of us, uh, we've read about it or we've heard about it. And God brought that, uh, dropped that in my spirit. And today, I want to release it unto you. Love you too. Thank you so much. Good morning to you too. Memphis, Tennessee, West Memphis, Arkansas. That's home for me. Hello. Love you too. God bless you. Thank you, Brazil. Hello. Thank you so much. You can see it. Hold on one second. Let me see. All right, let me know how that works for you now, uh, Instagram. 
Arizona, hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much. South Africa, Houston, Louisiana. Let me know how that how that works for you all now. Love you too. Want to make sure you can hear me and see me well. Jersey, hello there, Ghana. Looks good. All right, it's better. All right, we're going to get started. Again, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to drop this word in your spirit, and um, we will go from there. Uh, the Lord woke me up with this word this morning. He woke me up with it. And um, anytime something like that happens, I know that this is something that God is really trying to get to his people. And um, as I stated, it's a very familiar passage, but there is a word God has for you. Um, I want to go to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 3 through 17, verses 3 through 17, and we want to read briefly through it. And um, and share with you what thus said the Lord. The Bible says in First Samuel, chapter one, verses three through seventeen. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phineas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Panina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. She kept on praying to the Lord. Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving. But her heart, her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. I just want us to put on the screen, go in peace, go in peace, go in peace, go in peace. We'll get to that part in a minute, but I want to stick a pin there. I want you to begin to type that on the screen. Go in peace, go in peace, go in peace. When you read this story, you find that's, that the significance of the story is God shut her womb. God shut her womb. And because of that, the Bible declares that years, her rival, that's what the Bible refers to her as, which is her husband's other wife, Panina, she began to taunt her. She began to make fun of her. Because she knew that's where she hurt. She knew that's where her problem was. That's where her issue was. In other words, we will use in a term within this present age, Panina was being a little petty. 
Panina knew her issue. She knew what she was facing. She knew what she wanted. She knew what she desired. And when you think about the womb, the womb is the place of which you produce. It is the place where you give, where you produce life. And if the womb is shut, you cannot produce. If the womb is closed, there is no life. I feel that there are some spiritual Hannahs who's watching me right now. You are a Hannah in the spirit. And, and, and if this fits for you in the natural, you grab a hold to that word too. But I'm talking about in the spirit realm. You've been wondering, why can I only go so far? Why can I, get, can I not produce from here? Why can I not produce life? But I hear God saying to somebody who's watching me right now, what was once shut is about to be open. I don't know who this is for, but I just believe that for somebody who's watching me right now, everything that was once shut, those areas where you could not produce in, those areas where you could not give life in, God sent me here to tell you it's about to open up. As a matter of fact, can you type that on the screen? It's opening, it's opening, it's opening. I feel it. I can sense it. It is opening in your favor. The Bible declares that for years, for years, this woman had been hurting. For years, this woman had been broken. I came to tell somebody who's watching me right now, you had many years of disappointment, but God said, all I need is one day. You've had many years of trying and trying and trying, but God said, all I need is this one day. You've had many years of doing what you know what to do, doing everything that you know how to do, and it wasn't working, but God said, just give me one one day, I dare somebody to open up your mouth and shout, it is opening, it is opening. Listen, God shut her womb, which means it was beyond her control. But I have good news for somebody. God spoke to me and he said, Jacqueline, if I can shut it, I can open it. I don't know who this is for today, but I came to tell you, Pamela. I came to tell you, I came to tell you Instagram. I came to tell you Laquita. I came to tell you. Deandra, God says, if I can shut it, I can open it. I want somebody to know, somebody to know that when God opens it, he's about to create a new history for you. And in this history, this history involves life. This history involves productivity. You will produce what thus said the Lord. Those things you have been desiring to do so. God says in this season, in this place, I'm opening some things so that you can produce. You will no longer be stagnated. You will no longer only go so far, but God sent me here to tell somebody you will produce. You will produce life. You ought to open up your mouth and shout, it's opening. Those things that have been shut, those things that have been shut off, you've got to know within your spirit it's opening. Why? Because God says, if I can shut it, I can open it. If I can shut it, I can open it. In other words, God is saying, I'm unlocking what was once locked. Everything that was locked in your life. I want you to prepare yourself because today he's unlocking that thing. What was once shut is now being open. Go in peace, my brother and my sister. Why? Because God is granting you. That very thing you have asked him for. He's granting you what you are in need of. For years, you've been in disappointment. For years, you've been broken. For years, you've been confused. God, why? Why is this happening to me? Why can I not produce in my ministry? Why can I not produce in my business? Why can I not produce life even with my children? Everything is seem, seems like it's going left. But God sent me here to tell somebody it's opening on your behalf. It is opening on your behalf. All he needs is one day. This day, this day, let God open it. Let God open that womb, that place that was once shut. And I declare that when he opens it, your new history begins. You will produce life. 
You will be productive in anything that you touch. When you read on down into the story, you, you will understand and know that God gave her her son, Samuel, and she kept her word. She gave him back to God, people of God. When God opens this next place for you, honor God, give it back to God. Why? Because when God is in control of it, he can continue to increase you. He can continue to cause you to grow and produce more from that, from that seed that he has given you. Increase never stops in God. Growth never stops in God. Productivity never stops in God. We just have to continue to honor God with what he has given us. Give it back to him and let him continue to do a great work. But before I leave you, I need to remind you, it's opening. It's opening. It is opening. You will no longer be barren. You will no longer not produce. But from this day forward, you will grow. You will increase. You will increase. And it is so. And it is done. Absolutely. If he can shut it, he can open it. It's in God's control. And I believe that because you have the heart of God, because you're near and dear to the heart of God, God is shifting that thing in your favor today. He's shifting it. You've been praying. You've been crying out to God. You've been in need. And today I came to tell you that God, he God heard you. And now he's honoring your requests. Go in peace. Go in peace. And it is so. It is so. I want you all to join me every Saturday. I will be coming on here declaring God's word to you. Um, the time may vary. Just be ready. But every Saturday, I'll be on here releasing what thus said the Lord unto you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Years of battling. With this thing, years of struggling with this thing. This woman of God was spent years of disappointment, wanting a man child, wanting to give birth, but it wasn't happening. But God said, I just need one day, one day to show you my favor, one day to show you that I hear you, and now you're ready. Now you can handle it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much. God bless you. You enjoy the rest of your day and continue to declare that God is opening those things that were once shut. He's opening it now. Everything that was locked, he's unlocking it now. And he's creating a new history for you, which involves life. It involves productivity. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. Until next time, you've got to know that God is changing your story. I know you've taken a blow. Many of you have taken many blows. But I want you to understand that even in this blow, God is changing your story. He can use anything to shift your life for the better. It may look like it's devastating. It may, may appear to be devastating, but you've got to know that God is still a miracle worker. God is still a healer. He can still cause you to come from wherever you are and to enter into what he has promised you. And it is so. Until next time, God is changing your story. I love you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you.